Matter of fact, they ordered me to stop doing whatever I was doing, but they didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't get you to stop. Yeah. So the, what they did is they transferred me to a Spanish speaking unit. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't speak to them. So I couldn't speak to these guys, and and I tried. I mean, my Spanish. I mean, I know enough to get by, but not not enough to really do therapy with. And uh, then that's where I got into trouble again, where one of the inmates told one of the psychologists that was watching me what he experienced while he was in there. You know, and a. <clears throat> A lot of these times I could, you know, I, I slip by by going, hey, that guy's crazy. Are you going to believe him or me? <laughs> Are you going to believe? But by this time, that chief psychologist was looking to, for something to hang me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I had I mean, hit, one of the hit thing, my One of the things I get again and again, because I've only really started talking about my schizophrenia or the, my period of schizophrenia uh, um, nearly 30 years ago, in the last seven or eight years and what i've got time and again is it must have been a misdiagnosis because you don't get well from schizophrenia and or, that's or, bull crap that's yeah. bull crap. <laughs> that, that's what they want you to believe well, there is no other treatment except these expensive friggin' drugs that brought out your nervous system that's all there is you need to understand that if you want anything done you have to take these poisonous pills yeah. Yeah. Or they say something like, it must have been a very mild form, or maybe we had a misdiagnosis, or maybe, you know, you weren't fully schizophrenic, uh, or maybe you still are. You know, some, some people say, well, you still are. And I think, well, maybe everybody. I am. Maybe yeah, I am. Because, everybody. like, you know, I, I mean, I, I have such an open mind now. I don't dismiss anything. I wait and I, I sit and I, I park everything. The most bizarre conspiracy theory. I don't say. Oh, oh, so, so do I. So do I. Yeah, you it's like, to. okay, I've seen this. Uh, I know I saw it, and I'll remember it. Yeah. And then something else comes in. That's it. Uh, there it is again. But yeah. with the schizophrenics, what I'd have is one. One would tell me something about the voices that I hadn't known before. I never went on just one guy's word yes. or anything. Yes. I, like you said, I'd park it, yeah. and then when the next guy come in, I'd ask him. I go, well, w what about this? I had one guy tell me about this. Have you ever had those experience? What do you know about this? And bam, 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 bam. Here's the other one saying the same thing, you know, but they're not and being listened to. And of course, if you listen to the conversation that you and I are having about the gin and the archons and the demon, demonic attachments and entities and everything, to your average person, this is absolutely psychotic. Yes. yes. This isn't real. Yeah. You know, the, we're talking La reason. La Land. The only reason I can speak out like I am now, I wouldn't dare. I did it with Robert Stanley. Um, you know, he, he kind of found me while I was still working in the prison. And he wanted to do an interview with me. And I said, well, okay, I'll do that. But you've got to come up with some alienness, a, alias for me. I, mean, I, can't, I can't go on as myself because if they find out at the prison, I'm, I, you know, I'll, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. you know? So he came up with Dr. J. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I got two years in a PhD program, but that's spread all over the place. And I, I told him, I, I told him three or four times, you know, Robert, I'm not a doctor. You got to stop this. And he goes, well, that's just your screen name. And I said, but well, people think I'm a doctor. If I was a doctor, I'd be just like them. Yeah. <laughs> and I could feel them programming me that way when I was in the PhD program. They didn't want me to think the way I think. They wanted me to think the way they think. And they wanted to check that out to make sure I was thinking. So they were changing. They were, they were changing or trying to change how I thought and what I saw. And, and, and had I not had those seven years at the state hospital prior to getting in there, I would have been as brainwashed as the rest of them. I would have went out there, oh, yeah, these are uh, hallucinations. That's, and this is that's, the way a strong, it is. that's a strong word because the vast majority of people believe what doctors tell them. Um, yeah, the vast majority of people... Um, believe that the doctors know better than them, that they can trust their mind and their soul and their heart and their body to the doctors because the doctors know best. Exactly. And, that, and that's exactly what happens. So what, what when you start working with this population of schizophrenics, you'll see three distinct levels appear. You'll have the schizophrenics who are taking their medicines, they believe what the doctors have told them. This is a chemical imbalance. There is no cure. The only thing they can do is take these medicines and, and they're sick and, and 
something is wrong, they got a chemical imbalance in their brain, and this is the only thing that could be done, and the voices are hallucinations, you know, they believe that. Those are the guys that are going to die on those meds. Because they, they believe this horse crap, they're going to keep taking those meds until their, their central nervous system is rotted out and they develop Parkinsonians and EPS and the, mm -hmm. the schizophrenic shuffle. Then you've got the group in the middle who are not quite sure what the voices are. They, they don't quite believe they're hallucinations, but they don't, they don't quite believe that they're entities either. You can reach those guys, especially if they're on meds, you can talk to them, but it takes a lot longer. The ones who are going to recover the fastest are the ones who have come to the conclusion on their own that these voices are entities who are different from them, that the intent of these voices are, is not their intent. Those guys are a little bit easier to pull over because you can go, well, you know, you've listened to the voices in the past and, and now you they got you in prison. Was it your intent to be thrown in prison? Mm -hmm. And they'd go, no, no, that wasn't my intention. Well, then whose was it? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't yours. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. these voices have been telling you all along to do these things that got you here. Yeah, yeah. Whose intention was it that you ended up here? Mm -hmm. Intriguing, isn't it? I mean, and that goes... That goes with tracking down the thoughts, too, because a lot of times schizophrenics have a hard time. These things invade their mind. So basically what happens is they give these people their mind. So you yes. have two minds meshed. You have the mind of the person, and then you have the mind of the schizophrenic. And the thoughts that appear, they have a hard time ferreting out. Is that, is that thought belong to me, who I was, or is that a thought of the voices? You know? mm -hmm. And the voices sound and in a lot of cases sound just like their own thoughts. Yeah. So the only way you can ferret those out is what was the intent of that thought? Yeah. When a negative thought comes in and they see it and it's saying, this guy's uh, insulting you and you need to beat him up. You know, what is the intent of that thought? Mm -hmm. you know? and, and then you see that there's two different intentions at work. Here's the intent of the patient who wants to get rid of these things and wants to feel better. And here's the intent of these other thoughts that are coming into his head that are just the opposite. Mm. Yeah. So it, it all centers around thought and, and, and thinking and, and the realization that, and, and Manuel Swedenborg said, no thought that comes into your head belongs to you. Mm -hmm. In which case, what that means is there's entities around me because I don't know what I'm going to say next. This information is just flowing through me. Mm -hmm. you know? Which makes it's, us, the human form and condition, is like a transceiver, a receiver. Yes. It receives. It receives. It kind of plugs into the universe of consciousness and yes. it receives uploads it rece and downloads from whatever channel you're on. Whatever channel you happen to be yeah, on. Whatever frequency you happen to be on. So mm. in schizophrenics, their frequency is, you know, 0 0.01, very low frequency. Mm. So they attract that. Mm. And what's really interesting is that I've been talking to uh, <clears throat> one guy who has sent me a bunch of information on these uh, spirit boxes and these voice recorder spirit voice recorder things. Yeah, yeah. I know what them. they're doing is they're, they're attempting to tune into that frequency where they can hear these things, these ghosts, these voices. Mm -hmm. And a number of them are going psychotic. Mm -hmm. The voices go and they first they start hearing them. They hear them on the recorder. Then they hear them outside. Then they hear them inside their head. And they're, they're as psychotic as any, any of the others. Mm -hmm. you know? Because they've, they've changed their vibrational frequency to align yes. themselves with that well, frequency. With that. And not only that, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, what you're seeking is seeking you. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for these things mm -hmm. and these things know they're looking for them, that they come up and meet them and then they take over. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, we, we, we have this, um, we have this concept in Buddhism um, that's been taken up by the secret, you know, the law of attraction. But in Buddhism, yes. we have this law of cause and effect and whatever causes you're putting out, you're going to get the effects. It's absolutely inescapable. Yep. Uh -huh. So, whatever causes you put out into the universe, you're going to get the effects back. So if you start studying 
you know, uh, like yourself, if you're kind of trying to work with schizophrenics and you're aligning yourself with that vibrational frequency in order to be able to work with them, then they're going to be sticking to you too. Well, and they, you know, there's periods of time where they have, but what scared me other than that crackling that time, <clears throat> what scared me the most is while I was working with the schizophrenics in the prison, after each one fully recovered, and, and what comes to mind is one where he said the voices screamed and then disappeared, and then he heard silence. And he was totally disoriented. He couldn't stand up. You know, he's just like somebody hit him over the head with a baseball bat, and he's just sitting there. He just almost fell out of the chair, um, and they were gone. But that night at 3 in the morning, I woke up and something was crushing me into the bed. You know, I could feel it. I was being crushed, and, and, but there were, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything, but I was definitely being crushed into the bed. Mm. And this happened almost every time that a schizophrenic recovered. The next night, so it's almost like they knew where to where I was, where to find me, and I would just get crushed. I mean, I could just feel it. Something was pushing into the bed or trying to break through and getting to me. Mm. And, and I was like, that scared the hell out of me, mm. you know, and it was, it was absolutely terrifying because it was like, I thought that they only lived in the head of the schizophrenic. I didn't, and they found me, you know, and, and I'm like 25 miles away from where the prison is. <laughs> Did you develop? Did you develop a kind of a new spirituality? Did you develop techniques or, or idea or concepts of how to protect yourself? Well, I, I, I always was a very spiritual person. I never went into that prison without praying for help and assistance and protection. Same thing when I in the emergency rooms. I never went in there without praying for help and assistance. And the times I forgot to do that, <laughs> I paid. Wow, really? I paid, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it was a realization that um, that there are two sides. It's almost like the angel and the devil comic books where you have an angel whispering in your ears and a devil whispering in your ears, and whichever you listen to more is the one that's going to – because every time you give your attention to these things, whatever you're giving your attention to, you're also giving it your energy. Mm -hmm. So if you're concentrating on listening to EVPs, you're giving whatever these entities are your energy and they go, oh man, here's a feeding source. Look at, 